I've mentioned a few times before how it's difficult to graph on a computer. And a lot of times we do the next best thing, which is backwards graphing. I show you a graph and you determine the equation of fx, which produced the graph. So we're going to use everything that we know about rational function graphing, just like we would if we were forwards graphing. But we're going to pull out an equation from a graph instead of the other way around. There's no particular order you have to go in, uh, but I, I just prefer a certain order sometimes. Uh, I like to start with things that are very easy to know where they belong in this rational equation that I'm going to build. Remember what the format of this is. You have vertical asymptotes and holes on the bottom, but holes are the ones that are a repeat factor. So if there's a hole in the function, it appears both on the top and bottom of the equation. And x-intercepts live only on the top. So let's go through this and start building ourselves a function. And I might need a little more room here. Yeah, I'm going to need a little more room. So let's bring this down here and just shrink you a little bit. Shrink, thank you. All right. So where do the x-intercepts live? Well, I see one x-intercept right here. Give me a pen back. There's my x-intercept. Okay, so that's going to be produced by a factor of x plus 4. I know there's a factor of x plus 4 in this equation because it intercepted at x equals negative 4. And there's no other x-intercepts. If you don't see any blue dots, you can assume that means there's no more x-intercepts. These, these lines just go off forever, but they don't actually ever touch the x-axis. Okay? Now, uh, what's next? We could use some vertical asymptotes in our equation. Okay? Uh, here's a vertical asymptote. There's another vertical asymptote. They are at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 1. And there's the factors that produce those. And there's one more thing going on here that's very important to get down. This hole in the function. So that hole is produced by a factor which you can get from the x-coordinate point, that negative 1. See that negative 1? It had to be an x plus 1 that created it. So, this is kind of our first guess at the equation. And, here, let's write it this way. It's going to be, it's going to be f of x equals this thing. Now, maybe it's right, but odds are it's not. And it's probably off by what I've been calling a scaling factor. Okay, some number b. And it, it's important that that's a number. If b had any kind of an x in it, it would have changed all your x-intercepts around. So we know that b cannot contain x's. It has to be a solid number. And the way we're going to figure it out is by looking at the y-coordinate. Okay, where's a, this one will show up nicely. See that right there? That's our y-intercept. So what is the y-intercept of this? It's x, it's y equals positive 4. So when x equals 0, I'm going to get this. 0 plus 4, 0 plus 1, all divided by 0 plus 2, 0 minus 1, 0 plus 1. And that whole thing has to be equal to 4, because that is the y-intercept. So let's go ahead and solve this equation and figure out what b is. So this is b times 4 times 1 divided by 2, negative 1, and 1. Okay, simplify that a little bit more. And on the top, we have 4b. On the bottom, we have negative 2. So that means 4b equals negative 8. And that means b equals negative 2. So now I'm ready to write that equation. And I'm just going to do this looking at the top one. Okay. This is going to be f of x equals negative 2 times x plus 4 times x plus 1 divided by x plus 2, x minus 1, x plus 1. So almost all the information we actually had very, very soon in the process. The last bit was just figuring out what the y-intercept was, uh, or figuring out how to make the equation match the y-intercept that was in the graph. 